welcome back. This is an exciting lesson because we actually get to see all the fruit of our hard labour. Make your way back to the Hello component in the browser and click on the New button in the toolbar. And there we have it, our edit page built from our XML form and all of our three layout files. But it's not perfect yet. We really need to tidy up some language strings. So jump back to your editor and open up the en-gb slash language folder. Then open the en-gb.com underscore hello dot ini file. Position your cursor at the end of the file and then look for a snippet called backend item edit ini strings. This snippet has two variables, the name of the component in uppercase, for us that's hello, and the singular name of the record in proper case, for us that's message. Insert the snippet and you'll see it's added a heap of language strings for fields and labels and other things. Jump back to your browser and refresh the page. That looks much better. You should be able to see the structure that we set up in the layout with the two columns, the main data on the left and the options and metadata on the right. On the right you can see the two slider panels that came from the form XML file, one for basic and one for advanced options, and also a third metadata panel. If you click the Save and Close icon in the toolbar, the component will return to the list view and you'll see the record in the list. We can click on it to edit it and when the page comes up, let's have a look at the metadata panel on the right. You'll see that the created date is now displaying. Remember we added the code to selectively show that in the metadata sublayout. If we click on the Save icon in the toolbar, we'll come back to the same edit page and this time you'll see the modified date is now showing. Now let's go back to the list view and click the new icon again to create another new record. Just give that record some sort of title, different from our first example, and you can put something in the body field if you want. Then click on the save and close button in the toolbar and we'll be returned to the list view. Okay, we're going to put that list subcontroller to work that we created quite a while ago. Click on the icon in the published column that corresponds to the first record. The page will return with a raw language key in the system message. We'll have to add that in. Jump back to your editor and make sure the main language file is open and position your cursor at the end of the file. Then look for the snippet called backend list published INI strings and bring up the form. There are three variables to add in here. First, type the name of the component in uppercase, for us that's hello. Then type the name of the singular form of the record in proper case, for us that's a message record. And finally, add the plural form of the record in proper case, that being messages for us. Insert the snippet and you can see quite a few language strings that are a variation on a theme. The first block is three key value pairs of, for a particular action. The reason we have three is because we use a slightly different message depending on whether we've processed no records, just one record or more than one record. The Joomla Translation JText class has a method called plural that can handle these cases. The default case is the plural form. The no records case is handled by the underscore zero suffix and the single record case is handled by the underscore one suffix. You can even write your own handler to cater for the many different ways different languages handle pluralization. Save that file and jump back to the browser. Now click on the publishing icon of that first record again and see what happens to the system message. The message is now one message unpublished. Perfect! Select all the records and then click the publish icon in the toolbar. Now the system message reads, two messages published. We have perfect pluralization depending on the number of records that we processed. Well, that concludes our journey to build a back-end component that provides you with a list view and an edit form for the data. I hope you've really enjoyed this part of the course, but don't go too far. There's more to come. See you back then.